Hey guys, welcome back to the RXB guy. Uh, I'm going to do a quick walk around video to show you some of the things that I've done so far. Um, maybe give you guys a couple of tips on doing some stuff. But uh, so far I still stand behind my word. It is uh, it's a good bike. Um, I think for me personally it, it, it fits me very well. Um, but, uh, enough of the, enough of that stuff, and I'll get right to a few things that I've seen in pictures of some of the other guys post, and, uh, I'll just show you some of the things I've done so far. So, first thing I want to talk about is the forks. <clears throat> so, the forks, don't mind my neighbor's dog. The, the thing is just obnoxious. Um, but, uh, forks. So, the lower fork tube is the same size same same diameter as the the previous rxbs it's the upper fork tube that is smaller but there's also less travel so <clears throat> the old forks on the old model were uh, 900 millimeters of travel these are uh 780 so that doesn't really mean anything it doesn't pertain to, to anything at all because this bike is a totally different chassis but just so you guys are familiar, <clears throat> any of you guys that had the older RXB models and upgraded to this one, still the same size lower, uh, still 41 millimeter fork seal. But the biggest thing I want to talk about is, is my custom preload spacers. And I'll try to explain it in a simple fashion for you guys to see. I see it, everybody that's already got theirs and, and they post pictures or videos of them sitting on the ground. When you're sitting on the ground <clears throat> or on the kickstand, but the bike on its own weight, basically. If you look at your fork, just for an example, where it sits to the fork guard, a lot of these bikes are sitting with this part of the fork way down in here. So you're losing, you're losing like three inches of the of, of travel just on sag. And because the bike sits front end down, already because the back is high you know the quick fix is really those fork spacers um forks are good i like them i like the suspension on this bike a lot i don't really have anything bad to say about this bike at all definitely my favorite um so i'm running the spacers i have custom modified race tech gold valves in the front and the back but regardless of that <clears throat> The spacers will keep the bike sitting up in the travel. And whether you were to send me the forks and, and get valving done, or you just use your compression and rebound adjusters to get it set up properly, to keep that front of the bike up with the spacers, you gotta add a little bit of compression um, and slow the rebound down a little bit. Um, with my spacers, my valving, I'm I'm four, four out on the compression and 10 out on the rebound, but I'm riding on motocross track. So, you know, it's totally different than what most of you guys have. So I'm running the spacers to keep the front end up. I'm also running the forks flush at the clamps, which typically you don't do that. Typically you at least have the raised edge of the cap itself sticking up above. But my goal was to get as much travel and as much ride height from the front end out of this thing as I could. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the front brake hose. I see a lot of people, they got the front brake hose just hanging way over here because this black, this black tube is a protector, but it also makes the hose stiff. So if you take and clamp, the little rubber part keep that slid down it'll keep your brake hose straight instead of hanging over potentially getting hit by the tire um, I mentioned it in a post earlier or later last night I should say um, up here in New York for jetting <clears throat> I'm running 30 or uh, 42 pilot 135 main two and a half out on the air screw um, it's colder up here last few days has been in the 40s 
Uh, got snow up in the mountains already. Um, I did put orange KTM foot, foot pegs on there. Had to do some modifications. It wasn't uh, a five minute job by all means. Um, but them things are pretty cool. Um, working on working on a, uh, air filter mod right now. So hopefully we can get rid of that paper filter here in the next few days. We'll see when my stuff comes in if it's going to work the way I think it's going to. But um, I think I went over a lot of the other stuff. Shifter. Shifter's always been a problem on all these Chinese bikes. They come with that little short stubby thing. Um, there are better options out there, especially for people with bigger feet. I don't have big feet. Um, so basically what I did <clears throat> is I bent the shifter out and then I ground down the back side of this right here. So when it comes up, it's got just a tiny little bit of room to clear the case. Um, while I'm sitting here, there's the fuel petcock, uh, Articat 400, four wheel drive, four wheeler, um, turned around backwards so the shutoff valve is on the inside not hitting you in the knee um, I'm running a 12 45 gear ratio off-road of course um, works really well still personally could probably go lower than that maybe go up to a 47 on the back but um, oh what else did I want to talk about um, I got a super stock kit that I got posted on uh, Facebook, which would be cylinder head porting, high compression head gasket, and the advanced flywheel key, four degree flywheel key, which most everybody is familiar with. That combination um, with everything else being left alone. So cylinder head porting, the gasket, and the flywheel key is a four horsepower gain. Um, very noticeable, pretty substantial actually. So. You know, you're going from roughly 19 and a half horsepower to uh, a four horsepower gain. So that's that's pretty good on this little motor. Um, you know, if you didn't want to get into doing more extensive stuff like a camshaft or anything like that. I do have camshafts available. Um, brakes on this thing are awesome. Um, almost too good. Oh yeah, the skid plate. I posted a couple pictures last night. So when you mount the skid plate up with this bracket right here, bolts here, bolts here, the skid plate was hanging way down. There was a huge gap between the, the main frame rail and the skid plate. And you know, that's, that's really not that good because you go, excuse me, you start smashing rocks and it's just going to break the skid plate if the, if the plastic is just out there floating around like that. So I cut, you can see up in there where I cut and welded that thing. I cut an inch off of that bracket. And then I bent the bottom where it bolts right here. I bent it back just a little bit, put a little bit of an angle on it. And now you can see that it's right up against the frame rail. And... Uh, Fits good and actually looks way better. The first picture I saw of it looked kind of funky on there, um, on somebody else's bike. But um, it wasn't too bad. Obviously, most people probably don't have a welder, but <clears throat> I cut it. I cut it off and then just overlapped it the inch. I didn't actually shorten it an inch as far as taking an inch of material away. Um, but uh, all in all, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say this thing's a good bike. Um, quality's awesome. Um, can't really say anything bad about it. Um, you know, I'm a smaller person, so this thing fits me like a glove. Not sure how a lot of you bigger guys feel about it, but uh, you know, still it's a super tall bike, but it handles awesome in the woods. Handles great on a motocross track. Turns good, stops good. Um, plenty of power. And uh, next time I fiddle around with something on this thing I'll, I'll make another video but uh all in all great bike um, great quality and uh next time i do something i'll make a video and i'll see you guys soon thanks for listening